And we have sports people in here. Ooh. They're really watching sports. Oh, sports. Right? Yeah, so, you guys, sports are back on now, right? Oh, yeah. Have you guys been watching a little bit? Anybody kind of seen a little bit of stuff out there? Oh, yeah. Does it look a little different? Yes. Ryder, why does it look different? Because there's no fans. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> there are currently no fans right now in sports. Like MLB, like baseball, there's no fans in the stadium, which is kind of crazy. And so, Check out this video to see what it looks like right now. Well, folks, baseball is back. Again, the fans are not. People have missed the sport, but the replacement for fans is just plain weird. They've got <laughs> some virtual fans there, some cardboard cutouts. They do kind of look real. Um, yeah, you see there, Will Smith of the Dodgers had a, uh, an entanglement today with one of the cardboard fans there, taking a smoke shot right <laughs> Some rain next week here in the Ozarks, yeah, right, Beth? Just yeah. have the umbrella. Yep. Cooler temperatures as well. We'll see you tomorrow. Not cooler temperatures though here. <laughs> uh, yeah, right? So like if you watch any sports right now, like baseball has like cardboard fans, and I even saw they're like working on like more virtual fans, and then like Jeff was watching the game and they were like they hit a home run or something, and it's like this fake cheering. <laughs> and, like they scrub a player out and it's like Fake. Why are they doing this though, right? Like, why are they doing this in sports? Because sports weren't really meant to be played in solitude, right? Sports weren't really meant to be played with no fans there. That's kind of like half the fun with sports is they've got fans there, they've got fans cheering them on, all this stuff. And sports aren't meant to be played in solitude. And that's what we're kind of going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about how life wasn't meant to be done in solitude. And if anybody here maybe is like me, something I really learned over the past few months in this whole quarantine thing, I don't like being in solitude. <laughs> anybody here like being quarantined for this long? Yes. Oh, okay. And I agree. And it's very unique, okay? Oh, I'm not <laughs> Right? Like sometimes like you like your own space, right? Like we all like our own space. But to be in solitude and away from people, I'm learning, I really don't like that. And why? Because we weren't meant to live life in solitude or alone. And so we're gonna kind of be looking at this today. We're gonna be looking at something, we're gonna be looking at community. And so we're gonna be looking at the book of Acts today and we're gonna see this great of an example of what community really looks like and why it's so important. And so we're gonna read Acts 2, 42 through 47. And so I see you all write your Bibles. Um, so, <laughs> for the people on the camera, none of them have their bodies. Uh, no, we'll throw it on the screen though, so that's cool. Does somebody want to read for us? Elijah, you got it? It's 42 to 47, it's a lot. You think you can handle it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Alright, cool. And they devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching them the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the, through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their rooms, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Awesome, Elijah. Thank you so much. Do you like sweet hearts? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to break that down a little bit though. But what we see here is the believers, they were devoting themselves to learning more about God and praying, right? They were devoting themselves to learning more about God and praying. But something specific we kind of see is they weren't necessarily doing this just alone, but they were doing it together. They were doing it together. And the most important thing in our life should be, I know for me, is it should be our relationship with Jesus. Which is why we need a community that shares that in common with us. Why we need people around us a community of, what do you guys call it now, squad? What do you guys say? What's like the new squad still in? Your squad? 
No, okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just stop, just stop. Right? This is why we need, it's so important for us to have a good community or a group of friends or a squad or whatever you want to call it around us. And just like the believers in Acts did. They worshiped together, they met together, they were eating food together, they were praying together, they were worshiping, all of these things. They were doing them not just alone, but together. And I think you can all agree that sometimes, you guys have like a deep desire sometimes to just be known maybe, to be liked. Anybody ever want to just kind of be liked by people? It's okay to say yeah, right? Like we want to be liked by people, right? We want to have that group. We want to have a group of friends. Any sixth graders a little bit nervous about going to middle school? Like finding a new group? I know I was. A little bit? Nope, they're all like, yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> okay, right? We all have this desire to be known, and I think sometimes, because we have such this desire to be known, we're willing to even maybe gravitate towards the wrong crowd of people just because they know us or know our name or are willing to take us in. But what, if it, what would it look like if we took an effort, if we made an effort, to have a good community, a good group of friends, a good squad or crew or whatever you want to say. What would that look like if we made an effort to have this good group of community that shares that most important thing, that relationship with Jesus in common with us? What does that look like? And so three things I'm going to give you guys today, okay? Three kinds of groups of friends you need, all right? It's ahead, alongside, and behind. Can you guys say that with me? Ahead, alongside, behind. Right? So ahead, what does that look like? Someone that's ahead of you in life. So if you guys haven't noticed I'm fat now, that's not because I haven't been eating a lot over quarantine, okay? Yes, I had two donuts today, but I'm carrying a child actually. Okay, you guys know that? Some of you know that? right now gonna be a mom in like two months which is super crazy and so I don't know how to be a mom really I know how to like my brother always says like I mothered him growing up and I was like his mom and Jeff sometimes says stop being my mom but I've never been a mom to a kid before right and I love my friends but like some of them are not moms yet who are in the same stage of life as me and I love like some of my younger friends, but they're not moms yet. So what do I need? I need somebody that's kind of ahead of me in life, that has already kind of done this thing, who can help me with some of these things. Like, what kind of stroller should I buy? Like, never really thought about these things, but all of a sudden it's like, there's a thousand strollers out there, and I don't know what to get. So what do I do? I call up my friend, who's a mom, and has got like 20 kids, and I'm like, what kind of stroller do I need? <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's so important to have those people in your life, to have those people in life that are ahead of you and that share something in common with you. And so for you guys, it's important to have somebody that's ahead of you in life that shares that most important thing, your relationship with Jesus. They share that in common with you and they're ahead of you. So who, who can that be? Who do you guys think that would be? Any examples? Pastor Rob. Cool. Chip's got Pastor Rob. You guys know Pastor Rob, right? Oh, yeah. Right? That's great. Who else? Who would be somebody? Like, what's an example? What about a small group leader? Yeah? A small group leader. <laughs> <laughs> Any other examples? You guys got anything? Somebody ahead of you in life. Yeah, right? Okay. You like sweet tarts? Oh, you know sweet tarts? Good job. Yes. Sorry, Lenny. Right? I know. They're, I don't know. It's the back. I'm going to that. Yeah, it could be a parent, or maybe you have like a sports coach that you know has a relationship with Jesus, that they're a Christian. Maybe it's a sports coach. Maybe it's a teacher at school that you know is a believer. Something like that. Somebody like that. A small group leader here. So you got a few people in the room. Somebody that's ahead of you in life that can help you and has that in common with you. All right, number two. Who remembers number, number two? Who remembers number two? You got it, Emma? Alongside? Yes. Sarah questions? <laughs> Alongside. Who do you guys think these people are? Any idea? Pastor uh, North. The, Pastor, you want to trade seats? You want to teach the rest of the lesson? That was perfect. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, right? 
These are your peers. These are the people you go to school with. These are the people sitting next to you right now. They're people that are going through similar things as you, right? They're the people you go to school with. Maybe you sit with them at lunch. They're people that are going through similar things that you are and are going to be able to relate with you. Your friends, but also have that thing in common with you of Jesus and are going to be able to point you back to Jesus still when you're going through those things together. So you want to have people that are alongside of you. And here's the last one. This one's, this one's a little bit, you guys might be a little confused by this one. You're like, what do you mean? What was the last one? Number three. Oh, I just killed it. And as a middle schooler, you guys might be like, well, I'm kind of young. Like, what does that look like? But like, you guys can find somebody that's behind you that you guys can take alongside you and you can help. And so who could this be? Maybe it's a younger sibling. Maybe some of you right now, you can't obviously, but like, Bella, I know you wanted to start serving with like the preschoolers. That's an awesome way to come alongside somebody that's behind you. When we get back to hopefully soon, right? We're gonna go to small groups in like two minutes. You can ask me questions, I'm good. Well, I was just gonna say, at my old church, I used to work in the nursery, and <laughs> that's cool. Exactly, that's a perfect example. Yeah, that's it. That's a great example. Yeah, serving with some of the younger kids here, right? In the elementary ministry, or preschool, or whatever that might be. Find somebody behind you that you guys can help. And so why do we do this? Staying on track with God is easier in community. Staying on track with God is gonna be easier in community. It's easier when we have people around us that are working towards the same thing, right? It's easier when we have people around us working towards the same thing. And so we need people in our life that we can be real with, that we can go through things with, that are ahead of us, alongside, and behind us. And so I would encourage you guys today, we're going to head to small groups, start thinking about this. Who are these people in your life? Who do you have in your life right now? Maybe you don't. And if that's the case, that's okay. You guys can talk about that and find out how do I find those people in my life. God, thank you for this time together. I just thank you uh, for this group that we have this morning. We can all come out today, Lord, and just, um, you hop off the rain. We can get in and get outside a little bit still. You know, it's really hot. Um, you guys, I just pray that during this time, you would just allow us to be real with each other, that we would just open up and we would talk about this and talk about how we can have a good community of people around us that just share that most important thing in our life in common, Lord, and that's you. So pray that you just keep us focused, but we would have fun together, we get to know each other, and it's done. Everything will point back to you. Your name is